Hi, today we're making Bulge Levsh. It's a bread from the Azor Islands, the island of San Miguel, volcanic islands in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean between Portugal and the United States. And just beautiful areas. Some of the islands are just so green, kind of reminding me of uh, Ireland. It's very popular in a town called Forge, which I believe means ovens, because on the Azores they have some thermal vents. They are all volcanic islands, and there's still some thermal vents around the area that they actually use to cook food. The community will actually cook food in these thermal vents. Bolus Lev, a smaller sized bread, common to have it with breakfast of some butter or jam, and they're delicious, a little bit on the sweeter side. So let's do this. First, I'm gonna rehydrate the yeast. So I have one package of yeast with a pinch of sugar and a quarter cup of warm water. It's important to have your water warm. Ideally, you should have a thermometer. You want it between about 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we'll mix our eggs, sugar, and milk together. Sugar. It's a half teaspoon of salt. And shortening, you know, this, this recipe has butter, milk, both of those have fat in it. And anytime you see a bread with fat, you, you know it's gonna have a more tender crust, like more crumble to it. Like a French loaf or baguette, which has no butter, is very chewy. But the more fat you put in, in a bread, like egg yolks, the butter, the milk, this is gonna be a more tender type of bread. This is halfway between bread and cake. Now I'll put in my flour. The flour is added to the mixture. Now I'm gonna put in the rehydrated yeast. I also made a recipe for popsicles, a bread seen throughout Portugal. It's a great little roll to make sandwiches with. One thing I didn't do that would be helpful also if you wanted this to proof faster is to warm up the milk to about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Normally I do that, it just gives the bread a really quick start. Next I'll put in some melted butter. All my recipes could be found on justcookwithmichael.com. I'm gonna get my hands dirty, dive them in there. This recipe could take from about one and three quarter cup of milk to two cups of milk. It is a very wet dough. If it looks drier than this, add some more moisture to it. See how it's coating to my hands? It should look like that. That's important because this recipe I have is in you know cups and depending on the moisture, depending on how densely you pack the cup, it could make a difference. So that's why it's good to do things by feel sometimes and by sight. So you can see how this is definitely sticking all over my hands and that's the way it should look. So you wanna knead it for about five minutes. See, I've been kneading it, but it's still very sticky. Now you let the bread proof until it's double in size. So this could take about an hour and a half to two hours. I'm gonna put it in a plastic container just so you could see the rise. It's finished, it's bulk proofing when you see it's doubled in volume. Depending on the starting temperature of your ingredients and the temperature of your house will make a big difference on how long it takes to finish the bulk proofing. The nice thing about these square containers is it's the same volume all the way up. Where a big bowl, you know, it's, it's harder to tell what double in volume is where when you put it in a round cylinder or something with square sides, you can see exactly what double in volume is. My house is at 75 degrees. So a lot of times I will use my oven as a proofing box. I'll just turn on my oven for about 30 seconds, turn it off, put my container in there, just leave it there and it rises much faster. But I'm gonna do a time lapse just so you get an idea of how long it takes and therefore I'm gonna leave it out on the counter. So my dough temperature is 76 degrees Fahrenheit. So ideally, like a, a, a nice quick rise would be about 84 degrees. When you're making bread, you don't wanna be a slave to watching over your bread. I always think it's a good idea to give yourself at least two extra hours to the time you want your bread to be done. So if you think it's gonna take, you know, six hours, give yourself eight, because it's easy to slow down. You always could put it in the refrigerator for a little bit and slow it down, or just, you know, bake it an hour early is usually no big deal. The 
the bread has been bolt proofing for a little over three hours, so it took quite a while. You definitely need patience when it comes to bread, and a warm house helps. It makes a huge, oh man, that smells so good. Mmm, jeez. This is what matters, is the temperature of the actual dough. Even, you know, eventually the dough will balance with the ambient temperature, but this is what you're looking for. So right now it's at 80. That's ideal. Anywhere from, I mean, you could do it anywhere from 70 to like 85, but closer to mid 80s, you're gonna get a nice quick uh, bulk proofing taking place. So if your house is cooler than 80 degrees, you might need an additional, you know, hour of bulk fermenting for it to double. You could see it doubled in size. The other thing, remember, I did not warm up my milk. I highly recommend especially if your house is cool, to warm up your milk to about 115 degrees uh, when you add it into the mixture. Because uh, even though it's 115, once it's in with the cooler flour and other products, it'll balance out to closer to 80 degrees. Okay, our dough looks fantastic. You can see this is still a fairly sticky dough. God, that really, <laughs> there's nothing like fresh bread. That smells so good. So I'll work the dough just maybe for about another three minutes. Because this is such a wet dough, you do want to have a lot of flour on your surface. You want about tennis ball size of dough. This is probably about three inches in diameter. Leave a little bit of space in between your boulge because they will expand. So now we have 10 boulge levge and we'll let that proof for about an hour to hour and a half. All right, these have been proofing for about an hour and 45 minutes. The average temperature of the house of this area was about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. If your ambient temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll probably take about another hour. And the bread ideally should be about 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the ideal temperature for proofing, but if it's below that, it'll just take longer. We're gonna cook these on the stove top in pans. That's traditionally how it's done. When in doubt, it's probably best to start at a lower temperature. And the uh, heat is fairly low. You can see it's definitely medium or less. The back pan is even lower. Bread that is enriched, enriched meaning with eggs, butter, you wanna cook it to about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's cooked to 190, the internal bread should be done. If it's a bread that's not enriched, like just a baguette, then you really wanna cook it to about 205. That's a little high. So I'm gonna turn that down, take this off the heat. I just could tell it's getting a little too dark. That one looks beautiful. Flip this over, flip this back one over. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Like this one, you can tell it has some hot spots on it. This one's just perfect, just like a nice dark golden brown. If after two minutes you peak and it's starting, it's looking really dark brown or a little burnt, turn your flame down lower. Yeah, this pan, this pan I could tell is just getting too hot. That burner is probably just too strong, so I'll have to not use that burner. So what I found works best is to cook the bread on top of the range for 10 minutes, five minutes on each side, then put it in the oven at 325 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes or until the internal temperature reaches 190. They turned out great that way. That's it, we're done. That wasn't too bad. Like a lot of bread, don't be a slave to it. It's a little easier to slow it down than it is to play catch up. So give yourself plenty of time for it to proof. You might be able to tell there's already one missing. Absolutely delicious. It really is like, I believe bull levge means, uh, levge I believe is the word for yeast. So I believe it means yeast cakes. And that's exactly what this tastes like to me, if, if that is the true literal translation. It's just like you eat it and you're kind of like, you're just like in between, it's bread or cake. Really good. <laughs> eat, them, eat them hot with a little butter, jam. Hope you enjoyed this. Now go cook for someone you love.